Welcome to Relationships Q&A with Alan Robarge. I'm a psychotherapist and a relationship coach. Thanks for joining me. If you're looking for practical coaching conversations about real relationships, then you're in the right place. I take questions from members of our online community called Improve Your Relationships. And for the next half hour, let's brainstorm. Let's look at these questions from different angles, exploring our possibilities. We're not looking for one right answer. We're looking at what we can learn. The goal is to inspire you and get you thinking about your relationships. All our questions together point towards one universal question. We're all trying to figure out the same thing. How do relationships work? Well, for this episode, episode number four, there's a really good question that has been asked. And many of us have been in a situation where we have asked the same question. It has to do with relationships ending and very specifically the timing of that. Like, how do you know How would you know it is time to end your relationship? And this question came in, and I'm sure many of us can relate, and you might even be in a situation right now. This question is really important to me because in my work of working with couples and individuals about relationship Uh, couples counseling, uh, relationship therapy, uh, coaching for relationships. And inevitably, there's a number of us who, when we have attachment injuries and attachment trauma that is unhealed and unintegrated, and we seem to get stuck looping in some predictable, identifiable patterns of insecure relating. And when that happens, uh, a byproduct or a common result of doing that is the inability to leave, the inability to end a relationship for any number of reasons. Uh, But there are uh, many people who have just, you know the phrase, beating a dead horse, you know, just cannot uh, get out of this uh, cycle of a relationship that's not working. And some people prolong the ending, uh, avoid the ending for years. So this is a really good question Because we need to build up the strength and build up the clarity and build up our ability to take action, to have agency, to follow through with ending a relationship. And to get there, you need to assess the situation, assess the relationship, and and really uh, really come into some clarity of what is going on uh, so that you can determine, you know, that it's time to end. And so back to the question, here we are, episode number four of our podcast, how do I know when I'm to end the relationship? And what I'm going to share is in no particular order. And I, I like the fact that it's not in any order because it's going to somewhat capture uh, this idea or this feeling, the experience when you're in it of all of these things swirling together. And there's this uh, looping quality or reoccurring thoughts and experiences uh, that that keep feeding off of each other, that keep us stuck. And we're going to start by just identifying confusion and to live in a state of confusion. Uh, what is going on in this relationship? So you might be begin to to assess and say well wh- when is it time to end this relationship if you are noticing a, a certain amount of confusion uh, where uh, 
if if you're just looking at you know to what degree are you living in a state of confusion and to what degree do you not have clarity in your life uh, not have clarity about who said what when what's going on the the state of affairs are we on again are we off again you know is there some security here is there some trust i don't know i'm confused what did he say? I don't know. I'm confused. What did she say? I don't know. I'm confused. How do you feel about this? I don't know. I'm confused. What do you want? What do you, re- I don't know what I want. And, and so if there is this ongoing chronic confusion and, uh, the best I can do, I can't put a time limit on it, but I can say the phrase, if it goes beyond a reasonable amount of time, so you have to define what a reasonable amount of time is, uh, but uh, chances are, if if you're uh, like many of us who have insecure attachment or some attachment trauma that 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 we're working to heal and working to integrate, our threshold, our capacity for a reasonable amount of time is going to be really vast. We we generally have a a lot of tolerance to put up with. Uh, chaos and drama and uncertainty and dysfunction and toxicity and uh, just struggling in a relationship that is not working. And so the phrase a reasonable amount of time uh, to really challenge that and to limit it, to pare it down for whatever you think is the reasonable amount of time. Uh, maybe you need to, you know, chop that in half um, or experiment with, with, uh, uh, not allowing it to be that degree or that level, that, that length of time. So confusion, how do I know when it's time to end the relationship? You might be experiencing a lot of confusion. Now, something else that comes up for many of us is that uh, we start to have a resentment that is growing and festering. And if you can identify uh, that you have this resentment and it might show up as being oppositional, like something happened, your partner says something, uh, you know, there's some interaction and some exchange and you're just picking a fight at almost everything, insignificant things. And you, you generally feel this sense of this festering resentment. And if you if you step back and look big picture, you've been this has been uh, living with you, living in you, uh, growing for some time, and that's again an indication is that you have to step back and say, well, you know, uh, if you're just looking at how long have you been together and how long have you how long have you been in the state of resentment? Now, the resentment also links to contempt. And they're very similar, and sometimes they might just be the same thing. Contempt is this feeling of having disdain for the other person, just not valuing or cherishing your partner. And you could still say that you love him or her, you feel love, you, but there's this contempt. This It can also be a kind of ongoing irritation and a disgust feeling, a strong feeling uh, that you just don't like him or her. And it could even, you know, you have a kind of sour look on your face. Uh, Your partner comes home, your husband comes home, your spouse comes home, and you don't really greet each other. You have a kind of sour scowl or you roll your eyes and you're just feeling this strong sense of being judgmental. Now, some of you, some of us, we don't let it show. And we put on this whole extra layer of being nice and being fake and uh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. But then there's this very behind the scenes, covert, hidden contempt that is brewing and that you also have this extra layer then of doing all having all this energy and doing all this work to cover it up. Now, you might notice there's a disproportionate sensitivity to feeling hurt to all these little these little things. So, so some little thing might set you off and that you're in an argument, you're picking a fight, you're accessing this resentment. 
And then also other times you could be feeling uh, rather uh, sort of neutral or you're, you're, you're just you're starting your day, your guard is down, you're just sort of, you know, living your life and something happens. And quite honestly, it's going to actually be something rather neutral, but you're going to feel irritated about it. You're going to feel overly sensitive. You're going to get your feelings hurt. And, you know, why did you, why did you text that? Why did you use that phrase? You know, why, why did you have that look on your face when I showed up at at your work? Does it mean that you don't want to see me? And you're going to begin to start uh, behaving like you're highly suspect of, you know, asking, what does that mean? Well, what do you mean by that? Well, why didn't, what does it mean? You didn't text me. What, what are you trying to say? Um, and so this is going to fuel and tap into a general feeling of mistrust and that, that this whole process, the resentment, the contempt, the, 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 the feeling, every little thing, pushing your buttons and then you're feeling hurt and you're creating arguments. It's, it's all eroding trust. And as this mistrust is very challenged and compromised, you might even find yourself now starting to be suspicious of your partner, be paranoid, uh, and really question, you know, not only what does it mean in the moment, but, you know, what did you do last Thursday at eight o'clock? Because I called your phone and you said that you were at your meeting, but you weren't there. And so there's, there's this, uh, and maybe even snooping. Maybe even starting to, you know, go through your partner's wallet or purse or phone or do things where, where now you're, you're really, you know, if you put the behaviors on hold or what, you know, whatever's happened that's triggering you and you step back and you look at yourself in the mirror, like what does it say about you that you're snooping and need to test, need to question, you're feeling paranoid, you're feeling suspicious about the situation? It's saying that you have no trust. The the trust trust is not there in the relationship. Uh and so that doesn't mean seek it out and try to prove, you know, this feeling of why you're f- no feeling suspicious. It really means step back and look in the mirror and say, "Well, I don't have a relationship built on trust." I don't trust this person. So back to the original question, how do you know when it's time to end? Well, if you take an honest inventory of your inability to trust, that's a really, that's some really good information that will help you make the determination if it's time to end or not. Now, something else that couples do a lot when they're in this place of needing to end a relationship and there's some confusion about whether they are or aren't going to end is that there's a uh, uh, ongoing ability to create arguments, to pick a fight, and you're going to bring up old conflicts and you're going to rehash old old arguments. And there's something that I learned just, uh, I know there's different phrases for, I've learned it called, uh, to be called linking. Like we, so, so we could have uh, some argument, some current argument, and we're uh, complaining, we're angry, we're upset. And, and then we're going to link it to another argument that we had three weeks ago. And then we're going to link it to another argument that we had six months ago. And some people, they like to link their whole relationship history. So they're bringing up things that they, you know, argued three years ago that we, you know, that everyone apologized for. Everyone, you know, had, they, they had, they, they had gone through, everyone went through some closure. But here, when it's, when, when there's a questioning of trust, when there's an eroding of trust, when there's contempt, when there's confusion, and there's this resentment, and there's this disproportionate sensitivity over who did, did what, when, and how's all happening, and then the suspiciousness, and then we just start bringing up old conflicts and we're arguing. And then now we're arguing about the whole relationship. If, if you can take a break and step back and see if you're doing this, that might be some really good information for you to determine that it's time to end the relationship. Now, also what happens when our relationships are crashing and burning and it is time to end a number of people notice that they expect their partner to read their mind. 
that you're so at the end of your rope, you're so irritated, you're so, you've had the same arguments multiple times, you're living in a sense of gridlock, there's not a lot of movement or anything fresh, there's not a lot of generosity of, of accommodating each other, accommodating the partner. And, and both people are just waiting for the other one to uh, take the lead in the, you know, to be generous, to take the lead to try to create repair, to take the lead to connect. And then oftentimes what happens is whoever takes the lead, they're going to get shot down. They're going to get denied. They're going to get rejected, which is going to reinforce why they're not taking the lead in the first place. But if you get in this place of this gridlock, there's often this kind, this expecting your partner to read your mind. And that, uh, a certain period of time before this, you, you try to explain yourself. You know, something's not going well. Something's not going right. And I, I need to explain. And you might have even attempted to be diplomatic and attempted uh, to be careful with your language and with your communication. Try, trying to, you know, I, I want to share my point of view. I want my partner to understand my point of view. And if you notice, if you get to a point where you've given that up and you're not putting all this effort to try to explain yourself, there's a, a quiet resignation and an assumption that your partner should just know why you're irritated. Your partner should just know why you're so frustrated. Your partner should just know why you're at the end of your rope. And this will show up as just expecting your partner to read your mind. And you might find your, your self, you know, looking at your partner and saying things like, what, you, you don't get it? You really don't get it? You know, I've explained this to you, you know, 40 times and now, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see how you, it's so obvious. You know, it's like right in front of your face. There's this, this, from your point of view, you, you think that your experience is so obvious to the point where you don't even have to explain it anymore. And the fact that your partner can't read your mind and doesn't immediately understand why you're irritated, why you have resentment, why you have contempt, uh, why, why there's this sensitivity, uh, this short fuse to being irritated so much. Uh, that, that, uh, that your unwillingness to budge here, your unwillingness to, to want to work with your partner, not so much to repair the relationship. I mean, you might, you might be totally past that. I don't just mean work to repair it. I just mean to be a halfway decent, pleasant person that you can sit at, you know, go to breakfast with and, and have a normal conversation. And so if you step back and look at the big picture of your relationship, you say, well, how long has this been going on? How long have, have, have this, this feeling where you just sort of give up and you expect your partner to read your mind and know, you know, to completely understand and get why you're so irritated? If you, if you can step back and say, you've been doing this for a long time, that might be a good enough clue that it is time to end uh, this relationship. Now, there's also this chronic unsettled feeling, the distress, the discomfort, the unease, that when you are together, it's just not pleasant. And it, there's this feeling like, well, I don't even like spending time with this person anymore because we're arguing or there's tension or there's misunderstanding or... Some people, it just feels boring. It's not full of life. It's not full of zest. It's not full of vibrancy. It's to, to be together uh, feels really stale. And that obviously is, is some good information of whether or not, you know, you would want to end the relationship. Now, sometimes spending time apart actually feels like relief. And this, this is when, you know, people stay late at the office. They, they fill up their social calendar with other, you know, things to do with other people. And uh, there's, this, there's, there's a, a very purposeful intention not to be with your partner, not to go home, not make plans together, not to spend time together. Well, that, that's some good information uh, that that could tell you, you know, that it's, 
it's time to it's time to end your relationship. If you're more miserable, if you're more miserable than happy, if there's a general unpleasantness to this whole thing, to spending time together, then that to me indicates a real real serious concern to end this relationship. Also something else to consider and it's folded and wrapped up into everything we're talking about here. There's also the drama factor, the chaos factor, uh, the stir in the pot factor. I mean, it was couples, couples get into rhythms and cycles of arguing. And I have even worked with clients where we, we map it on a calendar and we figure out what is the frequency of their drama. And most people, it's very predictable. Uh, there's a, a kind of cycle, a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, uh, the big storm comes. Everybody's all, you know, have, getting all bent out of shape about something. And there's some latest tension and drama and the silent treatment and pushing each other away and uh, getting getting all you know upset about whatever's just happened, and and then that will dissipate or sort of subside, and then someone else then someone needs to provoke the other person. the The way in which you have trained each other over time to be in relationship is the quality of intimacy or the kind of intimacy that you have is created by pushing each other away and by you can't get your needs met directly. You don't have direct intimacy. So there's this demanding, being provocative and pushing each other's buttons, creating drama, creating chaos. And so when you're in it, there's there's this this kind this indirect aspect to that that our nervous system is still being engaged like we we're still this thing is important you know you and I are the our our argument again today this whatever drama it is for today that is keeping us connected and that's how we have defined relationship at this point and simultaneously, it's going to undermine trust. It's going to erode trust and it's going to strengthen, uh, hurting each other. But in, if that's all you have, many of us keep returning. Uh, it's like just poking each other. And then what I've already said about the arguing, bringing up some previous, previous conversation, previous argument and revisiting it while you're simultaneously, simultaneously poking your partner energetically with your words, uh, rolling your eyes, making faces, uh, uh, pouting, the silent treatment. And all of these things are about game playing, uh, which leads us to this idea of back to the original question, how do you know if it's time to end? Well, are you engaging in meaningful, authentic, relating, engaging your partner, or are you both playing these games of provoking each other, silent treatment, punishing each other through the silent treatment, which the, these are all kind of jabs, these passive aggressive jabs, making little comments about someone's appearance, making little comments about, you know, someone being late, you know, these, these kind of moments where you're you're saying something under your breath, but you say it enough that your partner hears it and uh, not building uh, trust and connection and intimacy. You, you are, you both are actively engaging and pushing each other away. If you step back, you look at your behavior and question, say, well, have you, how long have you been doing this? And, and is this primarily the way that you are relating? If it is the main way you're relating, this is really good information that it would be time uh, to end. Now, you might notice through all of this, you have a really short fuse, as I said, about being uh, overly sensitive. It just wears down your tolerance. You have really little tolerance uh, that when your partner makes a misstep, you're not going to offer any accommodation here. 
And the same for your partner. Your partner is not offering you any accommodation. There's there's really little tolerance, uh, and this comes back to the resentment because brewing underneath is that resentment, and anything that trips it up, anything that that uh, can can really I just trigger it. It's going to come out or any in any number of these behaviors and ways. Now, lastly, I just want to acknowledge something else to think about. If you're questioning how would you know when your relationship is, it's time to end, is you can look at your dreams. You can look at your future together. And uh, this, this is two kind of answers here. For some people, the dreams that they have built, this idea of what their future is going to be, it gets really fuzzy and gray and and distant and even diminishes to the point that say I, I don't I don't even really see a future with this partner anymore. I don't I don't even know. We're so not on the same page right now. I I don't I don't even know if we'll be living together next year. I don't even know if he or she will be my friend. So if you if you're questioning if it's time to end, you you can look at well, well what are some kind of realistic dreams that you both had that you're both investing in in a in a shared life and that you are imagining what the future brings. And if that is fuzzy or that has changed or that is is just feels really unattainable uh, to the point where it it seems silly to to believe in that. Now, that might be a good indication to uh, to, to a, a real good assessment uh, uh, point to think about. It's time to end. Now, I did say I was going to answer that uh, this in a se- another way, a second way. And that is sort of the opposite. Some people who are in this place, they are so crashing and burning the relationship. It's time to end. They're playing these games. They're involved in all of this chronic, unsettled discomfort, distress, unease, you know, just really, really challenged uh, to, to uh, uh, not be irritated with each other, not to, you know, it's really challenging to to be in relationship. But when you ask them about their dreams and their future together, they have this very grandiose, ungrounded, almost ridiculous vision of what they're going to do next year, of what they're going to do in five years. And it is so incongruent with the reality of two people who can't even get through dinner without someone crying, without someone getting their feelings hurt, you know, without creating tension and disconnect. But nonetheless, then they will talk as if they're starting a business together, uh, they're going to have a child and they're going to have a baby and they can't wait to buy a new house when the baby arrives. And it really engages in this extreme fantasy thinking. So if that's going on, if the dreams and the the future dreams, the future plans are so disconnected from the reality of what's actually happening, you know, a more realistic kind of way of, you know, you know, what do you think the future holds? Well, I could see us you know, maybe getting, you know, going to dinner to more in six months where uh, we uh, really get a chance to communicate openly and laugh and enjoy each other. And uh, we, we uh, have a lovely evening where we go for a walk and, and uh, connect more. I mean, that's, that's really what you need. That's realistic. You know, build this idea of some grandiose big future that you're building together when the foundation of what you're doing now is just so not working. All of these ideas, uh, everything here just folds into itself and plays off of each other. And, and really st- some th- important things to think about whether or not it is time for you to end your relationship. You have been listening to Relationships Q&A with Alan Robarge, where we talk about relationships because emotional connections matter. 
All questions come from members of the Peer Relationships community. And to learn more about membership, go to alanrobarge.com forward slash community. Thank you for listening.